All right. Some people have uh, questions about how to combine like the screen tone shader with other parts. Like if you want to combine it with a, you know, just your regular principled shader or with an outline or whatever. So I'm just going to show you how to do that really quickly. I did briefly show it in, you know, the main video, I believe but uh, I can't be bothered to go back and check that. So, um, and even if I did mention it, it was probably pretty quick. So, you know, smooth Suzanne, like we have here, just go over to shading, go to render view, make sure you're using EV for this. Let's see, I'll turn on a light, probably dim the back quite a bit. Also, screencast keys still doesn't seem to be working for Blender 4.0, so no, no keystrokes, unfortunately, right now but I'm also going to make the background transparent. And uh, let's just move this to the side like that. This is just my, my default scene set up right here. So that's why it looks, you know, like all this stuff is here. All right, so bring a shader to RGB. Oops, shader to RGB right here. Let's make, you know, the, the screen tone with the, the wave texture. So we can do that with a math node. I'll just search, yeah, I'll just search for a math node. I'm still using S to search, uh, even though I'm not supposed to. 4.0, they made it so when you press Shift A, you used to have to press S to start searching, but now you can just start typing. So I can start typing, you know, W-A-V-E, get a wave texture. So I'm gonna drop this in here, change it to greater than. Now we have this right there. Oh yeah, I should probably turn this, the color management to standard also, so that this white is actually white, like that. Okay, let's get the object. No, what do I want? I want the camera, camera data. Drag the view vector. We can plug this into a mix, but we don't want this to color. We want it to be a float. I'll, pl I'll plug the factor into the factor right there. Plug that in like that. And then we can uh, change these values to whatever we want. Let's turn this up a little higher. Okay. And also let's rotate this. So I'll bring in a mapping and rotate it uh, on the Z axis. I'll do 45 degrees like that. Okay. So now we have uh, something pretty basic. Let's see. Do one. Let's tweak this a little. Okay. So if you want to add this to something else, you would just get a mix color right here and uh and then you can add it literally just add it i'll plug this into the second we can change this to multiply like i showed in the video i did this with the uh with the outline and you can plug pretty much whatever you want into here so if we want we could plug um the result from the shader to rgb like this and that will basically just it's mixing you know this right here the principled with this right here and then you can control you know how much is actually being multiplied with this factor right here like that okay so if you for some reason wanted it to be you know different say we want this to actually be different colors or something like that i'll just like create a, an, another one right here let's see probably can't let's see if this actually works i haven't tested this so sometimes there are errors with no this works okay there have been problems in the past um, for me using multiple shader to RGB nodes like this, but something like this works. So now we can affect this to be whatever color we want without, you know, changing this color right here. Because if we do change this color, it's going to change how uh, how this screen tone looks. So let's make this something lighter so it's easier to see. And maybe let's also make this a little skinnier like that. Okay. So yeah, if I change the color of this, you're going to start seeing the actual lines like move around more and move to different spots like that. So you might not want to actually change this, this one right here. You might want to use another one, a second one. But yeah, so if you wanted, you could make multiples of these and layer them up this way also. So uh, let's, let's do that real quick. I'm actually going to plug this into the factor right here, change this to mix. And now we can choose two different colors. So uh, the black is going to be the first one right here. And then, you know, this one, we can make whatever color we want. I'll just make it like a, a pale blue or something like that. Doesn't really matter too much. It's just for an example. Let's duplicate all of this right here. Shift D. Okay. And uh, we'll get rid of this and bring in a Voronoi right here. So we want to plug the distance 
into the factor of the mixed shader right there. And now we need to take the result again from the shader to RGB, plug that into the greater than just like we do at the top, and we can start mixing this one in too. So let's multiply this and whatever we plug into the second slot, that's what we're multiplying. So that would be uh, this right here like that. We need to change this to 2D. We also need to turn the randomness all the way down and then we can change the scale you can see now we have lines and we have dots. If you want it to come from the other side instead, so basically it's uh, it's looking at the light instead of the, the shadow, I think we should just be able to switch this to less than and it should flip everything around. We'll see. We might have to adjust these values quite a bit. But yeah, it seems like it is on the opposite side now. So we just have to adjust these values quite a bit. It's the other one. Okay, so now you can see it's it's the light. So like I said in the video, if you want, if, in, if instead of making it darker, you want it to be lighter, you want to not use multiply, but use add. I think if you use screen, that also works. And then let's plug this into the factor instead. And then we can choose what color we want to use right here. So oh, actually, let's take a look at this because this might be inverted. It is inverted. So maybe if we just flip these, this will work. We can do uh, we can do one and then zero. Or how do I want to do this? Maybe we can add this. I haven't actually tried this, so I'm doing it on the spot. Mm hmm. You know what? <laughs> this is kind of silly, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to use another mix node because I know that if I use this, I can just flip it again. So right now it looks like this, but we run it through here. I set this to one and zero, and now this is the light part. So now I know if I plug this into the factor, this I believe should be working and it is. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So now we have light right there. We should be able to change the color, I believe. Is that right? Or instead we could also just use the mix RGB or sorry, the mix one. And then this is going to be whatever color we want. This is probably the easier way to do it, honestly. So we can just make this whatever color we want. Let's make it um, something a little more obvious. Let's make it like a, a pale yellow or something like that. Okay. So there we go. That's how you would do it. Let's take a look at this just in case you want to screenshot it. You could basically layer this up as many times as you want. The greater thans right now are just controlling these mix RGBs, plugging it into the factor, which is basically using this black and white texture to control which colors are being used. So the black is always going to be the first slot and the white is always going to be the second slot. So then when we look through here, instead of black and white, it's whatever these colors are that you choose. Same thing with here. So we have black and we have white. So whatever the first color slot is, is going to be filled in with the black, which is, you know, the result from this. The second is going to be, uh, the second slot is going to be whatever was white right there. So yeah, that's how you would do it. And this should work for, you know, shaders and stuff like that too. It's just that if you're using a mixed color, you can't plug a shader in directly and have it work. You have to run it through a shader to RGB first. You can see this is red, so it's it's just gonna break. But if we run it through a shader to RGB, then it should work fine like that because it's a uh, this it, this is expecting color data, and so this outputs color, so it accepts it. If that makes any sense. All right, um, I think that's enough for this one. Probably spent too long rambling. Hopefully this helps some of you having issues. Yeah, have a good one.